I've been testing this marble selection system contraption thing for a while now, and I've come to the very scientific conclusion that this thing is as useless as a chocolate thermometer. So far, this thing can do none of the two things that it is supposed to do. On the top, this thing needs to choose between black and silver marbles. But as soon as we introduce the black ones, the system grinds to a halt. Apparently, black marbles add too much friction to the system. Who knew that marbles were going to be so high maintenance? And I will eventually fix that issue. Maybe I will paint the black marble silver again, who knows? But in this video, I will focus on the display part. To solve the issue of quickly swapping the digits, I had this clever idea of using the marbles themselves to swap one digit for the next. You may remember that I had to tweak the end of the ramp a bit, as the marbles that fell from the top trays occasionally ended up hitting the marbles trying to exit the lower ramps, messing up the clock forever, because if one of the channels is empty, it will remain empty forever. And that solved the issue. Kind of, because after extensive testing, I realized that even with all those tweaks, this thing works most of the time. And that's not ideal for a clock. The best clocks work like all the time. So ideally, we need to make this clock work 100% of the time. At least 100% of the time, we are looking directly at it. And it seems that I'm way too deep into this marble clock idea to give up now. So what I'm going to do is go completely and utterly bonkers and over-engineer the hell out of this marble clock until we can make it work 100% of the time that, that we are looking directly at it. At least that. And let's be real. The idea of a marble clock is already absurd. And who is going to stop me? So bonkers it is. I'm gonna stop trusting gravity to do the marble swap and start using brute force to teleport the marbles out of the way, leaving space for new ones. And to test that, I made this, the SMTT, the Single Marble Teleporting Test. The marble selection mechanism will leave a new marble to be displayed here, and then I'll yank the previous one out of the way, and voila, a new marble is in place. For each one of the five rows of each digit, I need to swap three marbles at a time. So to test that, just in case, I've built this, the TMST, the Triple Marble Swap Test. And even though the marbles need to be moved way further, it seems to work just fine. Look at me, doing small scale prototypes and everything. I don't recognize myself. For these tests, we have been using linear motion because it was easier, but after some doodling, I thought it would look way cooler this way. This one will pivot in this axis in here and has two matrix size, matrix size, matrices? One for the digit on display, while the other one takes the marbles from the previous second out of the way. And to test this concept, I built this frame. I can attach the matrix plate to the frame and add an input ramp that aligns with the matrix so I can fit marbles into it. Now I need a way to alternate these two matrix once every second. So I've got this lever here that I can attach to the matrix. And now I need a way to move this lever back and forth. This took a while to get exactly right, so I will show you now the, the first thing that crossed my mind. An eccentric wheel. This is a really bad print, and when I say bad, I mean bad. 260 degrees is definitely too hot for PLA, but I think it will be enough to prove the point. This is optimal to say the least, as this moves the arm back and forth constantly, which on one hand doesn't leave the digit on display still for any amount of time to be seen, and on the other hand doesn't swap the matrix fast enough so the marbles would fall way before the empty matrix is in place, causing a disaster, and, and we don't need disasters. I think the movement follows something like a sine wave, but, but don't quote me on that. So we clearly need a better wheel than this one. But before we do that, a quick ad from today's video sponsor, Sovol. This is the new Sovol SV08, a Corex Y 3D printer that costs about $500 and runs Clipper. It is quite easy to assemble, as it took me just about an hour to put it together, and it's quite a fast machine, reaching speeds of up to 700 mm per second. The Savol SV-08 took inspiration from the Voron project, 
And to appreciate this open source community, Sobol donates $2 to the Boron project for every SVO8 sold. Sobol also provides accessories for the SVO8, like an HDMI display, nozzle kits, enclosure panels, or an EMMC module, and will soon launch new smoke absorbers and drying boxes based on PTC heating. And Sobol has reached an agreement with Coprint Obico, which means that the ESV08 supports multicolor printing and enjoys Obico membership services at a discounted price. If you want to know more about the Sobol SV08, check the link in the description. And now let's get those marbles in line. So an eccentric wheel doesn't work. And after playing with way more complex designs on paper, I came up with this, which is a simple cam wheel. But it has everything that we need. This wheel has a constant diameter throughout this section in here, which is the part where the lever will remain stationary and the digits will remain on display. And this is the section where the matrix plate will swing from one side to the other, and therefore we can change how fast the digits are swapped by changing how steep this transition is. And now that the wheel is on the machine, you can see that throughout this section in here, nothing happens to the matrix. But as soon as this section hits the bearings, there is a quick swap of positions of the two matrix. I added some legs to the frame so the machine is at the right inclination, so the marbles flow through the channels into the matrix. But again, I found that gravity works against me half of the time. When the marbles go through the channels into the matrix, it's great, but once the matrix gets out of the way, gravity makes the marbles stay in place. So I had to make some modifications and, and how can I say it? I, I got carried away, made a new matrix plate with new grooves in the front, and then I added a couple of combs in front of the matrix plate and swap the input ramp for a way more complex part that combines the input and exit ramps so I can get control of the marbles. And now we have this monster in here. As you can see, as I rotate the cam wheel, the channels align perfectly with the matrix. And these combs that I added in the front eject all the marbles from the matrixes 100% of the time. No marble will get stuck in there anymore. And there is still one part missing on this design because I will not be spinning this by hand. So I made this tiny spur gear in here that I need to attach to the back of the cam wheel so I can make it spin by itself. And with the big gear in place, the last thing this huge 3 kilowatt motor with an old drive S1 that I can precisely control because I think I can make the entire clock work with just one motor. No solenoids, no servos, nothing. But for now, let me attach the motor to the frame and see how justified all, all this madness is. The big gear in here has 100 teeth and this one in here has 10 teeth which means that for every 10 rotations of this one in here, this one turns one. And the cam wheel in here makes two swings of the arm for every rotation of the cam wheel. As we obviously need the arm to swing once every second, we need the cam wheel to turn once every two seconds, which means that this one in here needs to spin five times per second or 300 RPM. And that with the outdrive controller is just a single line of code. This marble swap mechanism will fail if the matrix is not swinging fast enough. But once the arm comes back to full speed, it self recovers, so it's not a permanent failure like with the system that we had before. So let's see if this brute force over-engineering approach is really worth it. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, it, it worked exactly as I hoped it would. And, and first try, first, well, first try, not counting all the changes that I've already done to the machine and then this being the third version of the system that is, you know. And yes, as a fun fact, all this contraption just substitutes this, this end ramp in here, just this tiny bit in here, but works 100% of the time. So <laughs> mission accomplished. Right now, I can only show three digits at a time because that's how many digits I can fit on the input ramps. But in the future, here will go the marble selection mechanism that will fit the marbles for a new digit every second to the input ramps, hopefully making it work continuously. And like, if you are not subscribed, I, I will do so right now because you will not want to miss what, what's coming behind and to the sides of this thing. So that's it for this video. I can't wait to show you what's coming next. Thanks a lot to all my Patreons and members. Thank you. And now please go and make something!